Hi, this is uh, Drew Sutherland. We are here at, in Oberwolfach at a, at a conference and I thought I'd ask him about uh, to explain to us the um, Polymath project. Sure. So what is it? <laughs> well, so um, the very first Polymath project, Polymath 1, was uh, started by uh, Tim Gowers, well, I don't remember exactly when, some, some years ago now. There was a uh, and it was an experiment in um, massive open collaboration between mathematicians um, to solve a problem of common interest. So the, the first problem was known as the density hales jewett theorem, which is a, a, a celebrated theorem in uh, com extremal combinatorics. And it had been proven, but the proof was very long and involved, and they were looking for a more elegant proof. Um, and this project was created in, uh, initially by Tim Gowers with a blog post and a uh, place where people from any, any, all walks of life didn't necessarily have to be a, math, a professional mathematician. Anyone who wants to can participate. And eventually they found a very nice, beautiful, elegant uh, proof of this theorem. Uh, it was published, and the, the results were written up in a paper and published in the Annals of Mathematics. And the, the publication was uh, under what kind of authorship? Uh, so it was under a pseudonym. Uh, they chose the initials DHJ Polymath. So DHJ stands for Density Hales Jewett, um, which was the name of the first problem they worked on. And then after, following that, there were a number of other polymath projects um, on different topics. and. And not all of them were, some were more successful than others, but there have been several papers published under the same pseudonym, DHJ Polymath. If you go into uh, Math Sinet, you can look up papers written by DHJ Polymath. And uh, so you participate in some of them. Uh, well, what's your, what's your, what do you think is, uh, is how, how is it working? How, how do you see this, this project? Uh, well, so the, I can only speak of the, the project that I participated in directly, which was uh, the eighth Polymath project. Uh, polymath 8 on uh, prime gaps. Um, not long after uh, Yutang Zhang's uh, breakthrough result where he proved that there were infinitely many uh, pairs of primes separated by a gap of at most 70 million, uh, which came out uh, in May of 2013. Um, in his paper, you know, Zhang's effort was very much focused on the, the uh, very difficult technical formal details of his uh, formal theorem. He consciously decided not to put a lot of effort in trying to um, make the number as small as possible. It, I mean, the major breakthrough was that you could prove a finite bound of any size. So getting from infinity down to 70 million was already a huge progress, and he left it to others to try and refine, further refine the results. And then there was some discussion on some uh, popular mathematical blogs, including Scott Morrison's blog, where people started talking about some easy ways one could go about um, improving this bound of uh, 70 million. And uh, as people started to look at it, they found more and more ways that they might be able to make improvements. And then I think it was June 4th, 2013, uh, Terry Tao, a uh, fields medalist uh, and someone who has uh, a very large presence on the internet. He has a very popular uh, blog that he runs and posts uh, on many different topics and a lot of people follow his blog. Uh, he suggested uh, that we uh, start an official polymath project with the intention, uh, really with two goals. One was to um, really try to better understand Zhang's proof, which was quite new at the time. Not everyone really understood all the details. So he hosted sort of an online um, reading seminar where he w went through different parts of Zhang's paper. And then the other part was to try and optimize Zhang re Zhang's result to the extent possible. And do, so, first of all, as you said already, but just to emphasize, this is something that is completely open to uh, absolutely Abs anybody. Absolutely. absolutely. And so, how how um, how do you think uh, is it in your in your opinion this in a way changing the way mathematics is being done? Well, I think it's done two things. One, it's it's opened it up to a lot of people who might not have otherwise gotten engaged in in this particular case. There were, I know, at least three people who were active participants in the project who would not call themselves professional mathematicians. One of them is a biologist, another one works on robotics. Um, but they had some really good ideas, asked a lot of uh, interesting questions, and made um, strong contributions to the project. And it also served to bring together mathematicians from very different fields who might not uh, otherwise have been likely to talk to each other unless they happened to work at the same university. So I think it, it really does help to 
um, foster a lot of communication between mathematicians and uh, both within the field and even outside the field that might not otherwise occur. And were the people that are, part uh, that are participating, and say particularly the young people that um, uh, maybe need to uh, prove that their uh, the careers in track and so on is participating in something like this, something that they can get uh, the, the the right recognition. You think? Yeah, I th that's a that's a very good question. I think it's something that um, we think about a lot. I mean, I think as the polymath projects are becoming more well known, I think it's uh, you know more and more likely that. Uh, being able to talk about the contributions that you made to a project like this would impress people. Certainly, I know it's kind of funny, with, even within my own department, um, I mean, I'm well known among the other number theorists and algebraists in my group, but working on the polymath project actually brought me uh, to the attention of other people in the department who perhaps the only thing they know about me is that I happen to have worked on this uh, project. So it's it, there, there so are So it actually has, has been actually even yeah, uh, it, more positive than, yeah, than, than been, the other way around. Absolutely. It's definitely been a positive. I was invited to speak at one of uh, the clo uh, colloquium on this particular topic just because it's a, the polymath problems tend to be well-known problems that are of interest to large numbers of people. So working on one of these problems um, can bring you to the attention of a broader community. And does the um, this the um, system kind of self policies itself? I mean, how how does the uh, do you have issues with people sort of doing inappropriate things or or how does that work? Um, it has really, at least again, I can only speak about the project I work on worked on. It has absolutely not been a problem. I mean, it's um, the results of the project are written up on a wiki page. Anybody, everybody who's participating has access to the wiki and can make changes. Anybody who wants to can comment on um, any of the blog posts and make uh, suggestions. Um, it really hasn't been a problem. I will say it, it has certainly helped that in this particular project we had uh, somebody helping to organize and lead the whole effort uh, in Terry Tao, who is uh, extremely capable and very highly respected, obviously. So I think that probably helps to um, keep everybody on their best behavior. But I think in general, you know, mathematicians are nice people, they like to work together, they like to work together on problems and are happy to exchange ideas freely. So no, it really hasn't been a problem. Great. Well, it's great to hear. So thanks very much, Drew, and I uh, hope things uh, keep going well for you. Thank you. Yep. Bye.